This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Friday, the 14th day of August in the year 2020. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here's what we're tracking tonight. Minister of Education Priya Manik Chan has announced that her ministry has taken a decision not to open schools in September as the coronavirus situation in the country remains concerning. During a televised statement today, Minister Manik Chan said schools will remain closed to face-to-face -to -face teaching until enough information is gathered that could lead to a safe reopening. All schools shall remain closed to face-to-face -to -face teaching for the month of September. While we continue to review and evaluate the evolution of the disease and our school's res readiness. The Education Minister also noted that being away from the physical classrooms will not mean that they will not be learning. The government does not believe, however, that the inability to reopen schools physically necessarily means the inability to deliver education otherwise. We are aware that some parents, teachers and schools have engaged their children academically by various means and we wrongly applaud and are deeply grateful for those efforts. We encourage all to continue to do this where possible from as early as possible. And if you need help doing that, let us know. Schools in Guyana closed their doors back in March after the country recorded its first set of COVID-19 cases. While some schools provided some online and social media teaching sessions, there was no comprehensive approach to the issue of teaching away from the classroom. The education minister in her address today explained that moving forward, there cannot be any single approach to address learning opportunities for the nation's children. We will therefore have to use blended, multifaceted learning approaches in the coming months. Ms. Manik Chan also said the decisions will have to take into account the pattern of the disease, internet availability and television reception for students. We will have to tailor our approach based on the epidemiological patterns, physical spacing, internet connectivity, television reception, teacher availability, and I'm really only naming a few of the considerations we'll have to have. The Education Minister said enough work was not done in the past month since the closure of school to prepare for their eventual reopening in a time of COVID. She has indicated that she will continue to meet with the senior officials of the ministry as they work out various plans to address learning in a new age. More news coming up in just a moment. Spend $3,000 in fuel at Falls Gas Station between August 3rd and September 30th and get a chance to win over 100 weekly prizes or $3,000 in our recently renovated supermarket and you can win weekly prizes and one of two great food hampers in our summer promotion. At Falls, we provide a safe environment for you to shop and you can choose from a wide range of products at unbeatable prices too, along with excellent service of course. So shop now at Falls and make this a summer to remember. Hello, my name is Clyde De Haas and I am the Managing Director of Unicomer Guyana Inc. The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted us all, but I promise you, we will get through it together. Shopping in this new environment could be daunting, however, we have fine-tuned our protocols to ensure we have a safe and comfortable environment for our staff and customers. Our store teams are observing the six 20-100 protocol, that is six feet social distancing, washing hands for 20 seconds and ensuring every day their body temperatures are below 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Additionally, all staff and customers are required to wear face masks when inside our stores. We are sanitizing all frequently touched areas including door handles and counters several times a day. Our service technicians and delivery team members will utilize full PPE when visiting your home. All these measures are to ensure we minimize any risks to you or to our staff. You can also shop with us via telesales or online at shopcoach.com. We are well prepared and ready to help you find the products you need in the safest way possible. GBTI is your Guyanese bank, a bank that understands every customer's unique needs, opportunities, challenges, and financial concerns. At GBTI, we see you for you. Whether you're buying a new home or car, planning your next vacation or retirement, saving for your child's future, or whether you're ready to take that bold step of investing in your dream business idea, we are with you every step of the way. 
We hear your stories and watch you focus on your dreams as we share your aspirations. We are more than just banking. We are a family. We are part of your community. Our commitment extends way beyond the walls of our branches and is demonstrated every day in the opportunities we provide to our individual and business customers. The support, time, and commitment we give back to communities across Guyana to help improve the lives of our Guyanese families. Because we see Guyana through your eyes. Welcome back. The Minister of Tourism, Industry and Commerce, Unish Waldron, has tested positive for coronavirus. She is the second member of the cabinet to test positive for the virus in the past few days. The first to be tested positive was the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Hugh Tata. The President, the First Lady and some other members of government have all tested negative, according to government officials. Some of them published their negative status last evening on social media. However, some medical officials are saying that despite their negative test results, they should remain in isolation and have another test done in the next two weeks to be given the all clear since they were all exposed to the virus having been in meetings with the two who have tested positive. Yesterday also the chairman of the private sector commission, Captain Jerry Govaya, announced that he had tested positive for coronavirus. He remains in self-isolation. Meanwhile, the U.S. Ambassador to Guyana, Sarah Ann Lynch, and the British High Commissioner, Greg Quinn, have both tested negative for COVID-19, according to information released from their respective missions. The two underwent the test after news broke that the foreign minister had tested positive. Both diplomats had one-on-one -on -one meetings with the foreign minister before his positive test was revealed. The two diplomats also held meetings with the president and other key government officials in the past week and were also present at the inauguration ceremony at the National Cultural Center. With their negative test results, the two and their deputies are still expected to remain isolated in the coming days. Now let's tell you that 18 new cases of coronavirus were recorded in the past 24 hours, but at the same time 104 new recoveries were also recorded. The total number of recoveries now stands at 306, while there are still 104 active cases. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Shamdir Persad explained today that the recoveries are based on the new WHO guidelines for releasing COVID-19 patients from isolation. Guyana announced weeks ago that it would be following the updated recommendations. Under the recommendations by the World Health Organization, for patients who showcase no symptoms, they could be released from isolation 10 days after being admitted once they have two negative tests 24 hours apart. Those with symptoms will have to remain in isolation for 14 days. In many of the recent cases in Guyana, the persons did not have symptoms, although they were tested positive. Dr. Posada revealed today also that over the period the 10th to the 14th of August, 59 new cases were reported. These cases come from regions 9, 4, 7 and the Riverview area in region 10. Tonight, the U.S. State Department is warning U.S. citizens not to travel to Guyana because of the coronavirus situation in the country. Guyana has been placed in a level 4 bracket as a country that U.S. citizens should not travel to. The total number of COVID-19 cases in Guyana is just over 600, while the total number of COVID-19 cases in the U.S. is over 5 million and climbing by the thousands every day. In the advisory warning issued against traveling to Guyana, the U.S. State Department said travelers to Guyana may experience border closures, airport closures, travel prohibitions, stay-at-home orders, business closures, and other emergency conditions within the country due to COVID-19. U.S. citizens are also being warned that violent crimes such as armed robbery and murder is common, and the local police lack the resources to respond effectively to serious criminal incidents in the country. Persons who decide to travel to Guyana are being told that they should visit the U.S. Embassy's website for information on the COVID-19 situation in the country and be vigilant during their stay. 
The US, which has the most COVID-19 cases and deaths in the world, has been warning its citizens about traveling to many Caribbean countries that are nowhere close to the number of cases in the US. The total number of cases in the Caribbean represents less than 1% of the total number of cases in the US. The Special Organized Crime Unit of the Ghana Police Force has decided to discontinue the fraud charges against recently elected President Irfan Ali over the sale of government lands when he served as the Minister of Housing. In court this morning, the matter was called forward following a request by Ali's attorney, Davindra Kasunan. The lawyer had written to the Director of Public Prosecutions, the Special Organized Crime Unit and the court seeking the discontinuation of the charges since the swearing-in of Ali as President. He said it would not have been in the public's interest to continue the case since the prosecution of a sitting President would be against Article 182 of the Constitution. Soku Special Prosecutor Patrice Henry explained that Soku has made a decision to no longer pursue the 19 criminal charges against the new President as he is immune to prosecution. Mr. Ali was charged in November 2018 after an investigation of his alleged involvement in the sale of prime government lands to members of the former PP civic government and it pointed to alleged fraud. Ali had always maintained his innocence and when he was selected by his party to be the presidential candidate, he appealed the charges being laid against him in the Court of Appeal, which did not block the charges from proceeding. Ali was declared the president of Guyana two weeks ago and sworn into office the same day that he was declared. The private criminal charges against the chief election officer are still in place, but the court is now awaiting a decision of the director of public prosecutions about whether the charges will continue. Attorney Nigel Hughes, who is representing the interests of Chief Election Officer Kate Lowenfield, had written to the DPP requesting that the charges be discontinued like she did with the charges that were filed against the GCOM chair. At the time, the DPP was not in receipt of the statements from the attorneys for the PPP and TNM representatives who filed the private criminal charges. But the attorneys have since indicated to the court that the DPP has requested the statements from them. Once those statements are received, the Director of Public Prosecutions will decide on whether the charges will continue against the GCOM CEO or be thrown out completely. Back in July, Mr. Lowenfield was charged with conspiracy to commit a felony and misconduct in public office. He was granted bail in the sum of $450,000 under private charges. The charges were related to a final report that Lowenfield had submitted to the GCOM chairperson following a ruling in one of the election cases. His next court appearance has now been set for the 24th of August if the charges are not discontinued by that date. Let's tell you now that Guyanese international music superstar Eddie Grant has issued a cease and desist order to US President Donald Trump and his campaign over the unauthorized use of his hit Electric Avenue in a campaign advertisement. The chart-topping song was released back in 1983 and has remained popular since then. On Wednesday, the Trump re-election campaign released a new advertisement attacking his Democratic rival using the song. In a letter to the Trump campaign, Eddie Grant's attorney Wallace Collins, who is a leading copyright lawyer, told the campaign that they must cease and desist using the song since they have made an unauthorized use of the copyrighted work. The song was written and produced by Eddie Grant and he holds all the rights to the song. The letter states as a result of their wrongful unauthorized infringing use in connection with their controversial political campaign, substantial damage and irreplaceable harm has occurred and will continue to occur to Eddie Grant and his reputation as an artist when affiliated in any way with the Trump campaign. The attorney also said that his client has always had a reputation for standing for truth and justice and this will be seriously undermined by any affiliation with the name Donald Trump in the political context and such damage will extend to the value of his client's music catalog, Mr. Collins wrote to the Trump campaign. A number of artists have written to the Trump campaign over unauthorized use of their music for his re-election campaign. The Guyanese international artist said the use of his song by the Trump campaign is wicked. He said they have sought to infringe on his intellectual property into a derogatory political rhetoric. Two serving members of the Guyana Police Force were today charged for murder and remanded to jail over the shooting death of a Festival City resident, Cecil Sampat. 
The 39-year-old man was one of two persons badly injured when the police opened fire in a car that they were in during a chase. The two men were rushed to the hospital, but Sam Pat died two weeks after without ever regaining consciousness. In court today, Corporal Godwin Thomas and Constable Troy Munro appeared before the chief magistrate to face the murder charge. They were not required to enter a plea to the indictable charge. The two who were shackled for their court appearance were immediately remanded to prison and the case will continue later this month. It was on the night of July 25 that the police were summoned to break up a roadside brawl on the main road outside Agricola. The police claimed that one of the men jumped into a car with Sam Pat and the car sped away from the scene. The police gave chase and the driver of the car refused to stop at various roadblocks. Additional police ranks were called out and it was in the vicinity of Mandela Avenue that the police opened fire on the speeding car. No weapons were found in the car, although a policeman who responded to the initial incident at the curricula claimed seeing one of the men who ran into the car being armed with a handgun. Two of the men who were in the car were injured by the gunfire and taken to the hospital. Sam Pat passed away while the other man remains critical and could be paralyzed for the rest of his life. On the police blotter, a 51-year-old homeless man who stepped regularly on one of the stands at Durban Park was found dead this morning with multiple stab wounds to his body. He has been identified as Clint Grisandi. A police report stated that the body was discovered motionless at around 6 o'clock this morning on the southern side of the park. He was clad only in short pants which was pulled down below his butt. Stab wounds were observed to various parts of the body, including his neck. He was pronounced dead at a Georgetown hospital, and the body has since been transferred to the Lycan Funeral Home for further examination as the investigation continues. Although the Durban Park is usually busy in the early morning and afternoon hours with persons exercising, in the nighttime the area is desolate and many homeless persons and drug abusers gather for their night's rest. Across the region is coming up next. Spend $3,000 in fuel at Falls Gas Station between August 3rd and September 30th and get a chance to win over 100 weekly prizes or $3,000 in a recently renovated supermarket and you can win weekly prizes and one of two great food hampers in our summer promotion. At Falls, we provide a safe environment for you to shop and you can choose from a wide range of products at unbeatable prices too, along with excellent service of course. So shop now at Falls and make this a summer to remember. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways, knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. They've made a positive impact on the heavy-duty transportation industry in Guyana since they've arrived. Guyanese are amazed at their power, durability, efficiency, and superior handling capabilities. These are brand new trucks, manufactured in partnership with German, Italian, and French companies. They have a powerful reputation for operating under very adverse Guyanese conditions and come with full after-sales service and spare parts. They're the most sought-after trucks today, with over 500 units in Guyana, and they're available in over 100 countries, including South America and the Caribbean. Being. Be smart by brand new ST Hobo Trucks today. Call 608 4998 and arrange for an inspection at ST Truck and Incorporated, Block B, Public Road Covenant, East Bank, Demerara. We give thanks for it. You spend all that money on your watch. How much time you spend with your son? So much money in the club. How much you spend with the ones you love? The simple things are your blessings. Cheese, please. Remember, Tara Shiley, this is how we aim to please. The music will never ease. Cheese, please.
Across the region right now, the Prime Minister of the Bahamas, Dr. Hubert Minnis, the Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of Education have all entered voluntary self-quarantine after their offices were exposed to coronavirus. In a statement, the Cabinet Office announced that a centre which houses the Office of the Prime Minister, the Ministry of Finance and their agencies has been closed for cleaning and sanitation following exposure to coronavirus. However, it could not be confirmed if the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister or the Minister of Education have been exposed to the virus. The statement also said that other employees of the centre have been encouraged to self-quarantine until further instructions are issued by the Ministry of Health. Meanwhile, on Wednesday, the Bahamas recorded more than 1,000 cases of coronavirus and government offices continue to close due to exposure. Police in Trinidad and Tobago arrested eight persons after they seized marijuana worth more than 94 million Trinidadian dollars in central Trinidad. The Trinidad and Tobago Police Service reported that based on extensive intelligence and investigative work, there has been a major disruption of a transnational organized drug syndicate with connections in Jamaica, the US, the UK and Canada. In a statement, the police said that around 10.30 a.m. on Wednesday, officers from the Central Intelligence Bureau, the Northern Division Gang Unit, the Interagency Task Force with support from the Customs and Excise Department and Port Security, intercepted a container at one of the wharves in Chihuahuas. The container reportedly left the port of Port of Spain earlier in the day. On searching the container, officers found 958 boxes containing a compressed plant-like material resembling marijuana, weighing more than 947 kilograms. And finally tonight, international news. The U.S. Postal Service has warned one state that its election laws might mean that millions of mail-in votes go unaccounted in November's elections. In a letter to Pennsylvania's top official overseeing the vote, the USPS said that that one-week turnaround for mail-in ballots may not be possible. It comes amid a major slowdown in mail deliveries, which critics say is due to policies enacted by a Trump appointee. A record number of people are expected to vote by mail due to the pandemic. Mr. Trump has repeatedly said that mail-in ballots will give a boost to his rival Democrat Joe Biden and lead to voting fraud. Experts say the mail-in voting system, which is used by the American military and by Mr. Trump himself, is safe from tampering. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting.